last week, we kicked off a brand new series called Doubting Jesus. And uh, really, this whole series has been designed to help anyone that maybe has questions about Jesus, has doubts, um, has maybe some false beliefs or misconceptions about him. We want to help you discover who the real Jesus is. And so last week, we talked about who is Jesus. And we said that, you know, as far as the historicalness of Jesus, that is undeniable. There, there's so much evidence that points to the reality that Jesus was a real person. And uh, there's so many historical sources. Most, uh, the majority of scholars uh, believe, even anti-Christian scholars, non-Christian scholars believe that Jesus was a real person just based on the historical evidence. And so we said that the historical evidence of Jesus is undeniable, but who Jesus is is what seems to be debatable to so many people, right? And there's so many questions, and they, they question who he is and what he was all about. And so our, we ask the question, who is Jesus? But most importantly, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Because how you answer that question literally determines everything. How we answer that question determines everything. And so today we're going to look at the next question that we're going to explore over the next several minutes, which is, is Jesus God? There's probably not any more, there's probably no uh, bigger controversy than this question right here. Is Jesus God? This is what seems to be the dividing line for so many people who know that Jesus was real that, that know they, that they can't deny the evidence, when it comes down to his divinity, there seems to be a lot of misconceptions and divisions, even within, uh, even amongst Christians, as we'll see here in just a little bit. So here's the deal, and I want you guys to just, over the next few minutes, put yourself, like go back to the time of Jesus and imagine yourself being a Jewish person and hearing this guy claim to be God. Hearing this man, who maybe some of us knew growing up and saw him with his family, and all of a sudden, he starts claiming to be God. Now, nowadays, if, if someone walked around on earth claiming to be God, we would say they're a little crazy, a little cray-cray, right? A little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? As a matter of fact, there's been several people all throughout history that have claimed to be God. Some of them have been some famous cult leaders, like this guy, Jim Jones. Some of you guys remember him back in the, the late 60s and, and 70s. Jim Jones, he claimed to be God and led 918 people to their deaths in a mass suicide in Jonestown, Guyana in 1978. How about this guy, Charles Manson? Charles Manson, convicted murderer and hippie cult leader, once said this, I'm God to my friends, and I'm the devil to my enemies. But he had a God-like mentality. Then we have this pastor, quote-unquote pastor, from Florida, in Miami, Florida, Jose Luis de Jesus. He, 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 uh, basically, his thousands, his thousands of followers called him daddy, and he said that he does, not nearly, uh, he does not merely need to pray to God because he is God. Crazy, right? He actually had a tattoo on his arm that says 666. And, and just a little side note, and then he, he, he was apparently a quote-unquote pastor that led, what, which was a, a cult at that time, and um, claiming to be God. And, and you know what's so crazy about this little side note, as I was kind of studying this, I actually found out there's a lot of people from Florida that have claimed to be God. I don't know what it is about my home state. <laughs> Maybe you've seen the Twitter feed, the Twitter account, Florida Man, but man, there's a lot of loony people in Florida, and I'm from Florida, but I don't know what it is about, I don't know what it is about the water in Florida, but there's a lot of people that have claimed to be God, just like this guy. And so and just imagine, though, if someone rolled up in here today and started declaring themselves to be God we would say, hey, we need to call the cops and they need to be put into an institution. Jesus claimed to be God over and over and over. But you know what's so interesting is that so many people want to say that all paths lead to God, that all religions, 
basically say the same thing. You know, they all believe the same thing, and um, all, re- all roads lead to heaven. But what's so fascinating is that when it comes to Jesus' divinity, they all don't believe that. Matter of fact, um, let's take a look at a couple, what, uh, couple uh, world religions, what they teach about Jesus. So Jehovah's Witnesses. They actually say Jesus was merely Michael the archangel, a created being that became a man. Some of you guys have probably encountered Jehovah's Witnesses, and I'm not saying they're bad people. What I am saying, though, is that they don't believe in Jesus as God, and they're off on their teaching. And you probably you know, encountered them. They probably knocked on your door. But they believe that Jesus was merely Michael the archangel, a created being that became man. Mormonism. G- they say Jesus was not God, but only a man who became one of many gods. And they also say that he was also a polygamist and had a half-brother uh, named Lucifer. His half-brother was Lucifer or Satan. So that's what they believe about Jesus. Unitarian Universalism. They say Jesus was not God, but rather a great man to be respected solely for his teachings on love, justice, and healing. Baha'ism. They say Jesus was a manifestation of God and prophet, but inferior to Muhammad and Baha'u'llah. Again, all these religions don't believe in Jesus being God. Buddhism. Jesus was not God, but rather an enlightened man like the Buddha. So, all these misconceptions, all these teachings that are out there, and they all say that all roads lead to the same place, but when it comes to Jesus, that seems to be a very divisive issue. And so, if we're going to know what, about the divinity of Jesus, we have to look at what he said about himself, right? Right? If we want to study someone, it's, it's great for us to look at bi- biographies or, or to look at actual historical documents and evidence and statements of what they said about themselves. And, and so we're going to take the next few moments to look at what Jesus specifically claimed in Scripture. Now, if you weren't here last week and, and you have questions about Scripture, I covered this. But last week we talked about how we can rely on the historical evidence of Scripture because it is a historical document. Right, that has been proven as accurate, as authentic, and full of integrity. And so we can trust the New Testament because it is a historical document, specifically the Gospels and the, and the letters. And so we're going to look at many of the things that Jesus actually said about himself when it came to this idea of him being God. Again, I want you guys to keep in your mind about what it was like to see Jesus in person. Here's this man claiming to be God. Because we, we kind of take that for granted. If we're, if we're Christ followers, we kind of take it for granted uh, of some of these claims that he made, right? And so let's take a look. We, there's 10 claims that, 10 things that Jesus referred to that indicate that he believed he was God. So Jesus said, number one, that he was more than just a good man or teacher. He said that he was more than just a good man or teacher. Now, some of us are like, well, yeah, I, I, of course he was more than just a good man or teacher. Well, here, here's the reality of the situation is that 52% of American adults believe that Jesus was just a great teacher and nothing more. 52%. Maybe there's people in here that believe, yeah, I come to church and, you know, because this is my parents' religion and, you know, it's what I was brought up in and I think Jesus was cool, but I just don't believe he was God. That's the sentiment of 52% of Americans. Mahatma Gandhi said this, I regard Jesus as a great teacher of humanity, but I do not regard him as the only begotten son of God. So Gandhi believed that Jesus was a great teacher, but not God. But listen to what Jesus said. Mark 10, he says this, or says this, it's a story Uh, about him, and it says, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So here's this man, he's coming to Jesus, and he specifically says, good 
teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replies, he says, why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? Now, we would think that this sounds like a great compliment, right? He's calling him good teacher because that was the sentiment of many Jewish people back then that maybe respected Jesus, right? They were, they were trying to figure him out. They, they believed him to be just a good teacher. They knew he was a rabbi. They knew he was a teacher, but they believed, some of them believed, the majority of them believed that he was just merely that, a teacher, nothing more. So Jesus asks him, he says, no one is good, or Jesus replies, he says, no one is good except God alone. So in other words, what Jesus was saying in this moment is that I am more than just a good teacher. As a matter of fact, in God's standards, no one is good. Like we can do good things, even the best teacher of every world religion probably could do good things, but they can never be 100% good. Like no one, not even Billy Graham, could ever be 100% good, right? And none of us could ever be 100% good. And so Jesus is saying, listen, no one according to God's holy standards could ever be considered good because we all fall short of God's standards. So he's pointing to this idea, listen, you can't just call me a good teacher. I'm not good because I'm a teacher. I'm good. Listen, what he says, no one is good except God alone. So essentially what he was saying, I'm good not because I'm a teacher or because you respect me, but because I'm God. You understand? So Jesus was saying, hey, I am more than just a good teacher. I am the good God that you have been looking for. So the first thing Jesus said that he was more than just a good teacher or man, all right? Next thing is that Jesus said he came down from heaven. He came down from heaven. Now listen, there have been people all throughout history that have claimed to have near-death experiences, and they've claimed to see heaven right? And we've seen movies made about this. We, we, we've seen even celebrities have talked about this, uh, from Sharon Stone to Burt Reynolds to, to even Ozzy Osbourne has claimed to have a near-death experience, right? And the list goes on and on. There, there's been even several Christian movies of, of people that have claimed to have died and gone to heaven. And there was one of those movies, and we have to be careful, but there's been one of those movies turned out to be a fraud, um, it was the movie, uh, The Boy Who Went to Heaven. And it turns out he was this para paraplegic boy that apparently died and went to heaven, and his parents fabricated the whole thing and they made all this money. But there's been all these claims of people going to heaven, right? Even Muhammad, Islam's prophet, claimed to have gone to heaven. But Jesus said the opposite. He said, I came down from heaven. Matter of fact, this is, this is actually what he said in, in John 6. He says, for I have come down from heaven. Doesn't get any more plainer than that, right? <laughs> I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So again, think about this, guys. You're seeing this man saying, I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. Therefore, listen, the Jews started grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. So, the, so the, the Jewish listeners were like, whoa, this guy, this guy's crazy. He's saying he came down from heaven. And, and it goes on to say, they were saying, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? So some of them had seen Jesus grow, grow up. They saw him playing as a kid, and, and, and they, they knew Joseph, his dad, and Mary, his mother, and they're just like, wait a minute. Now you're claiming to come down from heaven when we've seen you? And so it goes on to say, how can he now say, I have come down from heaven? And so check this out. Here's, here's what, what took place. Because of this, it says, therefore, when many of his disciples heard this, they said, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? From that moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. So they were offended. They could not believe that Jesus was saying, I came down from heaven. They're like, Jesus, we like you as a teacher, but now you're saying a little stuff that's like in, in left field. This is a little crazy. But listen, no other founder of any world religion ever claimed to be God who came down from heaven. 
the founder ever said that? Jesus said he came down from heaven. The next claim is that Jesus said he was the son of man. How many guys have ever read that in the Bible and have maybe wondered what, what that means? Jesus said he was the son of man, okay? In, in Matthew 12, 32, here's one example. Uh, Jesus said, whoever speaks a word against the son of man, so he's talking about himself, right? It will be forgiven him. So Jesus is saying, he's referring to himself uh, as the son of man. As a matter of fact, he actually uses this title 88 times in scripture. He says, he refers to himself as the Son of Man. It's the title that he gave himself, and the only reason why he gave it to himself is because he was speaking of himself, and he could only speak truth. And it comes from Daniel the prophet. Daniel the prophet actually um, penned this title 600 years before Jesus was physically here on earth. 600 years. And it comes from Daniel chapter 7, where he says this. I, he actually had this vision. Daniel was sleeping, had this prophetic vision. And this is what he said. I continued watching in the night visions, and suddenly one was like a son of man who was coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days, talking about God, right? He approached the ancient of days and escorted before him. It was escorted before him. He was given dominion and glory in a kingdom so that those of every people, nation, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. So this is a prophetic vision that took place 600 years before Jesus ever showed up here physically on earth. And so the Jewish people knew this term very well. They knew that Daniel was prophesying about their future Messiah who would come down from heaven, right? But they did not correlate it to Jesus. And Jesus is saying, look, I am the son of man. And so they knew that Jesus was essentially claiming to be God in that moment. Jesus, the next statement, the next thing is that Jesus performed miracles, Jesus performed miracles over and over and over. Over and over and over. Right? Scripture records all these miracles that he did. And here's what's so interesting is that many people, even nowadays, don't believe in, in miracles. There's, there's people that are cessationists. They don't believe in, in the gifts of the Spirit. They don't believe that Jesus can still heal and all this stuff. And, um, and, and I do. I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, but where all that mindset comes from it comes from uh, the scientific uh, um, rationalism, which led to naturalism, where people um, stopped believing in the supernatural. As a matter of fact, during Thomas Jefferson's time, all right, one of the founding fathers, he actually said this about Jesus. He, and he actually liked Jesus, but listen, listen to what he says. Jesus did not mean to impose himself on mankind as the son of God. And, 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 and Thomas Jefferson did not like all the supernatural stuff. He was, he was influenced by rationalism and naturalism and did not believe in the supernatural. So much so, he actually took a knife to the Bible and cut out all the miracles that Jesus did, took out the virgin birth and took out the resurrection and came up with his own version of the Bible, the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth, and is now known as the Jefferson Bible. Because he did not believe in the supernatural. And there's, there's many people that question the validity of the supernatural. They question miracles. They question Jesus performing miracles in the Bible. But Jesus said this about his miracles. Well, before we get to that, there's actually over 40 miracles that are recorded in the Gospels that we see. From Jesus walking on water to Jesus raising the dead. Right? To Jesus uh, opening up blind eyes. And, 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 the, and the list goes on and on. There's over 40 miracles recorded historical in a historical document known as the Gospels. In John, in John 10, it, Jesus says this. He talks about his miracles proving that he was God. He says this. He's speaking to the Jewish people. He says, you say you are blasphem blaspheming to the to the one the Father set apart and sent into the world. Because I said, I am the Son of God. If I'm not doing my Father's works, don't believe me. But if I am doing them and you don't believe me, believe the works. So Jesus is saying, listen, 
I know you're questioning whether or not I'm God's son. I, I know you're questioning whether I'm, I, I'm God in the flesh. But if you don't believe me, look at the miracles I'm doing. That should be proof enough, right? And, and he goes on to say, this way you will know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. And then they were trying again to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. And then they were trying again to seize him, but he, he, he so they, they, they were upset. They got mad, and they, they tried to seize him in that moment, right? And, and here's the thing. There are several accounts, even outside of Scripture, that testify to the miracles that Jesus performed. Like, we, we see evidence in Scripture, but there's actually evidence even outside of Scripture. The Jewish Talmud, all right, this is an actual historical uh, ancient manuscript that taught rabbinic, uh, what the rabbis that were known as teachers, it, it, it basically documented their laws and history and all this stuff. It was written between 400 and 780. Listen to what it says. It says, it says this about Jesus. Jesus practiced magic and led Israel astray. So this is an ancient manuscript that's talking and saying, Jesus practiced magic. So there's no denying that there was something taking place. There was supernatural evidence of something taking place because it's recorded from opponents of Jesus. But they call it magic. Uh, Josephus, the historian, we talked about him last, uh, last week, 37 to 101 AD. He says of Jesus that he was a doer of wonderful works. So Jesus performed miracles that pointed to the Father is documented not only in Scripture, but even outside of Scripture. Jesus did so many miracles that John actually says this, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if every one of them were written down, I suppose not even the world itself could contain the books that would, would be written so there's over 40 miracles documented in history but in, in, in the Gospels. But John says, like, Jesus did way more than 40. Like, if, if, if we tried to even write down all the works, all the miracles that Jesus did, not even the books of the world could contain them. Jesus confirmed that he was God through the miracles that he performed. The next statement that we see in Scripture, emphatically, Jesus said he was God. He just flat out said it. He said that he was God over and over and over. Now check this out. Numerous religious figures throughout the history of the world have claimed to speak for God, have claimed to speak for God like, like Muhammad, like Buddha, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Joseph Smith, right? They claim to have sp spoken for God, but rarely have any, of, have any claim to be God. Jesus emphatically over and over and over stated, I'm God. I'm God. And what's so interesting is that there's many cults and in like, and, and, and world religions that claim Jesus said, never said that he was God. I, I, there's many of them that say that Jesus never actually said he was God. Well, that's just completely false. It's not true, as we'll see here in, in Scripture. But listen to what the Jehovah's Witness say uh, from the Watchtower Society. And, and listen, I'm not here to condemn Jehovah's Witness, okay? I'm not, I'm not on a, a rampage against any world religion out there or any, cult or any other belief. However, I want to bring clarity to who Jesus is because they're wrong. But they said this, Jesus never claimed to be God. Maybe some of you guys have had people knock on your door and, and they've tried to convince you that Jesus never said that. And, and we'll see here in just a second that Jesus emphatically said that. Mary Baker Eddy, who's the, who's the founder of, the, of Christian science, she said Jesus is not God. Jesus is not God. Didn't claim to be God. It was not God. But listen to what Jesus said about himself. Just to, make it, just to, to, to help bring clarity to what Jesus actually said about himself. And in John 8, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, before Abraham was I am. And so they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus was hidden and went out to the temple. So Jesus said, hey, before Abraham ever existed was I am. So 
what, what does that mean? And, and again, some of us, we just kind of re- have read these passages before, and we're like, oh, that's cool. Jesus said before Abraham was I am. That sounds neat. I don't really know what that means. But for whatever reason, they're getting mad. They want to throw stones at him. All right, so let's break this down a little bit more, okay? What Jesus was saying is that he claimed to exist even before Abraham. And in Judaism, the Jewish people revered Abraham as the father of their faith, right? They revered him. And so here Jesus claimed to exist even before Abraham, who lived roughly 2,000 years prior. So Jesus is saying, listen, I existed before Abraham, who you revere. Yeah, I know he was here on earth 2,000 years prior to me, but I was before him from all eternity. Then he goes on to say, I am. And in saying I am, Jesus was declaring himself to be the same God who revealed himself by the title I am 1,400 years prior to Moses in the burning bush. You guys remember that story? The burning bush and God reveals himself to Moses and he says I am, right? And Jesus is making the same declaration, I am. And so this is the reason why the Jewish people at that time when they're listening to Jesus make all these statements, they're getting mad. They want to pick up stones and and, and stone them right there. And And he goes on to say, I and the Father are one. Again, the Jews picked up rocks to stone him. And Jesus replied, I have shown you many works from the Father. For which of these works are you stoning me? And they replied, we aren't stoning you for a good work. And the Jews answered, but for blasphemy. Because you, being a man, make yourself God. So the claim that Jesus never said he was God is just completely not true. Jesus emphatically said over and over, I am God. I am. My Father and I are one. Right? It doesn't get any clearer than that. He emphatically said it, and it's because of this that the Jewish people wanted to kill him. This is what ultimately led Jesus to the cross because they considered himself to be blaspheming God by declaring that he was God. This is based on Exodus 20 where it says, you shall have no other gods before me. And they revered, like, this is the first commandment. And so Jesus saying that he's God, they're they're saying, hey, you're breaking the first commandment. This is blasphemy. This is worthy of death. And this is what sent Jesus to the cross. So Jesus emphatically declared that he was God. Not only did he emphatically declare it himself, but he also confirmed it to others. He confirmed to others that he was God uh, and, and, and never backtracked from it. In Mark 14, it says, but he kept silent. <clears throat> this is right before the crucifixion when he was being tried. It says, but Jesus kept silent and did not answer. And again, the high priest questioned him. Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus. So they're asking him, are you the Messiah? Are you, are you the promised Messiah in Scripture? You're, you're the Son of God, which means, are you God? Right? So they're asking him blatantly, and Jesus, in that moment, does not deny it. He says, I am. And you, listen, listen to what else he says, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And so to which the the high priest did this. It says that the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy, and what is your decision? And they all condemned him to death. So Jesus confirmed to others, he never defended himself. He knew what he was getting himself into. He knew that this meant death by crucifixion. And he never backtracked. The next thing is that Jesus said he was sinless. Jesus said he was sinless over and over and over. Now, here's the interesting thing. 41% of American adults believe that Jesus sinned when he was here on earth. 41%. 52% of teenagers that attend a Protestant church, which is parents, a little side note, this is why it's so important that your teenagers, that your students are connected and gathering with us on Sundays and, and learning scripture, right? Because this is important. They need to know theology. They need to know doctrine, right? 52% of American teenagers that attend a Protestant church believe that Jesus committed sins just like other people. But Jesus over and over said he was sinless. Matter of fact, John 8, 46. Who among you can convict me of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? 
Even Josephus talked about his, him being a man of virtue. Like, like they couldn't find any fault in him. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. They couldn't condemn him to death for any sin, right? Because there was nothing to find. Scripture says that he was tempted in every way, yet he did not sin. Not only was Jesus sinless, but Jesus also forgave sin. Jesus forgave sin. Listen to this. In Luke 5, seeing their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. And then the scribes and the Pharisees began to think to themselves, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies, who can forgive sins but God alone? So think about this. Again, guys, you're, a, you're sitting there listening to Jesus. You're questioning him. And here he is forgiving people of their sins. And so they're irate. They're mad because this is blasphemy. This is saying that you are God. You're making yourself equal to God, right? And yet he is forgiving sins. And listen, there's been there, no other teacher, no other religion has ever been able to claim that they can forgive sins. This is why all religions is full of good works, right? You have, to, you have to perform. You have to do well while you're here on earth, and you're constantly striving, and, and you never have security because you're, you're trying to be, you know, your, your good works are supposed to outweigh your bad works, right? They can never absolve sin. This is why Buddhism talks about reincarnation, like, you know, because you want to reach perfection, and you just keep dying until you finally, and you come back to life until you finally reach perfection, right? Because it can, they can never absolve sin. But Jesus came to forgive sins. Jesus is the only one that could ever forgive sins 100%ly for all time. Jesus came and forgave sins. The next statement is that Jesus taught people to pray to him as God. He taught people to pray to him as God over and over. We, we see scriptures like John 14 where he says, Whatever you ask in my name, I will do, I will do that. I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We know that prayer is talking to God and Jesus is saying, hey, you can pray to me. You can talk to me. You can do whatever. You can, do. You can pray to God in my name. Over and over we see this. Jesus said he was the only way to heaven. This is the last statement. Jesus said he was the only way to heaven. See, not, not only did Jesus declare that he came down from heaven, but he also taught that he is the only way to get to heaven. Now, there is a popular belief nowadays that all roads lead to heaven. And Jesus actually said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, Jesus welcomes all people to come to, Jesus welcomes all people into his kingdom, but it's only through him. It's a very ex exclusive statement. Like, there, there's, there is no other way. Jesus said, like, I am the only way, but there's this belief out there that all religions, all spiritual paths lead to heaven, lead to God. And listen, friends, I, I want you to understand that it, that's a deception. That is not true. And I say this with all love. Steve Harvey recently said this. He was visiting Abu Dhabi and hanging out with some Muslims over there. And he says, there is no one way to heaven but no, and no one way to paradise. Oprah Winfrey several years ago actually said this. There are millions of ways to be a human being and many paths to what you call God. Well, I'm a Christian who believes that there are, there are certainly many more paths to God other than Christianity. Why are we doing this series? Because these are the teachings that are out there. And for those of us who are followers of Christ, we need to know why we believe what we believe. And then for anyone that maybe is a skeptic or has doubts, I'm hoping to bring clarity to who Jesus is. See, because here, here's the deal. Jesus made all these claims about his divinity. He, he emphatically said it over and over. And so either we doubt Jesus 
we kind of write it off. We just keep on going with our lives or we take a moment to really go, okay, is there any truth to this? As a matter of fact, C.S. Lewis, who uh, many of us know him as the writer of the Chronicles of Narnia, he was once an atheist who became a follower of Jesus. And he actually said this, and he wrestled, right? Before he became a follower of Jesus, he wrestled with the idea of who Jesus is and was he God and all this stuff. And finally, he came to that place where he could not deny that Jesus was God. And so he actually says this. Listen to this statement. We're getting ready to close here in a second. A man who is merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You could shut him up for a fool. You could spit at him and kill him as a demon. Or you could fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. He did not intend to. Think about those radical claims. Jesus, there's really only three options for us to believe based on what C.S. Lewis said. Either Jesus was a liar, he knew that he wasn't God, yet continued to claim to be God, and he's the greatest fraud of all, and so 2.3 billion followers of his are completely deceived. Or he was a lunatic. He believed he was God, even though he wasn't God, and deceived 2.3 billion people whose lives have been impacted by him. Society has been changed by him. Or he was Lord. He said those claims about him being God because he knew he was God and he knew that he was the only way to have a relationship with God. Those are the only options that we're left with. And here's the deal. Either Jesus is a liar, a lunatic, or he's Lord. And we have to pause here for a second and really consider this. We have to pause here and feel the weight of what Jesus said about himself. We can't just kind of go on with our lives. Either he was a liar, and you can continue to believe that, or he was a lunatic, or he was Lord. And listen, if he was Lord, then that really changes everything. If he was God, that has massive implications on our lives and our destiny. Because if he was God and we are seeking another path to God, then we will never get to God. If he was God and we are just rejecting him and we just keep on living the lives that we want to, then we need to understand that there are massive consequences awaiting us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If he was God, then that means he is the only way. There is no other way. And so we can't just leave this moment right now without considering this reality. Either Jesus was who he said he was, or he was a liar or a lunatic. And the fact of the matter is, is that there's so much evidence. There's so many people that have been changed by Jesus. You know what? The world has tried to snuff out Christianity, has tried to, has tried to uh, cause people to believe a false belief about who Jesus is. But the world can keep on trying because they can't kill somebody that's been brought back to life. They can't destroy God himself. And so today, friends, listen, I want you to consider, to look at your life right now Look at your life. Have you accepted Jesus as Lord? Because there's massive implications if you haven't. The Bible says if you do not believe in Jesus, you are condemned already. The Bible talks about the wrath of God. 
that God's wrath, he's loving and kind, but the Bible says that for anyone that is rejecting Jesus, that God's wrath, because he's just and holy, God's wrath is being stored up against them until the day of judgment. And, and friends, listen, I, I love you enough to tell you the truth that if you have not passed from doubt to faith in Christ, that is awaiting for you in eternity. But God, who is rich in mercy, sent his son from heaven to earth to rescue us, to save us, to redeem us, to give us hope and peace with God. And I want to invite you today to know him as your Lord and Savior. And it's just as simple as you right now, wherever you're at, just crossing that line of faith from doubt to believing in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we come to you right now and we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your son to die for us, to live the life that we could not live. On the cross, he took our sins upon himself. And, and now, Jesus, we thank you for that. We thank you that you made a way, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And right now, God, we just thank you. We acknowledge you as our God and Savior. And for anyone right now, that is ready to, take, to cross that line of faith, Lord Jesus. You, call, you are calling to them. And if that's you, friend, wherever you're at, it's just a matter of you in this moment saying, I believe in you, Jesus. Right now, wherever you're at, just declaring, I believe that you are God and I make you the Lord of my life. Just do that right now, wherever you're at. We thank you, Jesus, for your great mercy and your, and your love for us. Amen. If you made a decision to follow Jesus today, let me first congratulate you and just welcome you into God's family. We would love to personally connect with you. So if you made that decision, please let us know about it. Text DP Follow to 94000. Let us know the decision you made and we'll get in touch with you. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to come back next week as we seek to answer the question, was Jesus human?